Yo. Word up. Yeah, there's a, it's a, it's a whiskey review. Hey, things. And, oh, is this Japanese? Yeah. Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. This is Daniel's Rex. This is Japanese whiskey called... Here we go. Now this is from Patron Saint now, Patrick Cohn. Patrick Cohn. Patron Saint of Okay, I'm excited to get into some Japanese whiskeys that are more easily available now with the crush in the big famous brands. Okay. And I like this one, and I think it's Kayo. I'm, I've Kayo. Look around. Kayo. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Kayo. Yeah. So this is a former employee of Asahi, which we have, Asahi brand Japanese whiskey, who's went off on his own and worked with Jeff uh, Karlovich and started sourcing Japanese whiskeys. Okay. And doing even new makes and doing weird things to them and creating their own releases. Okay. So this is a Japanese independent bottler. Oh. Kind of right cool, right? Right on. This is like a compass box style type thing. Yeah. But using Japanese whiskey. Yeah. Right? And I think that's super cool. Man, the golden honey color coming off of that thing. And this is a it's really light. Mizunara release. Oh, I love the Hold on. Now, is this aged yeah. or finished? Both. Oh, okay. I love me the Mizunara. The so, this is a peated whiskey. 46%. And, and for context, those of you that are new to Japanese, has a lot of a history that ties back to Scotland. So yes. you're going to find a lot of similarities often to Scotch. They put oh. this on a ship and let it rest in a ship for three months like the Jefferson Ocean thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking Jefferson Ocean. And the Jeff, who's a master blender, Jeff Karlovich said, I thought it was bullshit until I tasted the whiskey right. at the end of the three months. Yeah. And it was a whole different animal. No. So, but, 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 but. But what we know about the first initial experiments many years ago with the Mizanara oak, mm -hmm. the casks. A lot of leaking. A lot of leaking, and in a short amount of time, it didn't necessarily have an amazing thing, so they but forgot long. about it for decades until they eventually dusted it off and tried it again, and it was blah. So now, the ocean. The ocean, though, the, the time, because it was a relatively short time. Mm -hmm. Relatively short time. How long? How many months? Uh, three months on the ocean. Three months. That's nothing with Mizanara. That's nothing with Mizanara. But. The aggressive movement, maybe it shook things up a little bit. Maybe we got an exact, maybe you got an accelerated oaky result. This is a almost meaty, savory smell. Yeah, no, the peat is definitely present on the nose. It's uh, rich in dark vegetation yeah. and and salt. I would lean more towards the salty soy the salty vegetation than i would straight up meaty savory barbecue when it comes to the peaty nut now this was evidently uh madeira casks for two years and then mizanara oak barrels for longer than that okay he said the angels share more than doubles oh whatever in the you're... mizanara casks because they just leak like a sieve yeah so i love the nose on this on the nose on the nose we're squarely in scotch territory you could say this is a scotch and i wouldn't be like no -uh. Oh, this reminds me of Talisker. It's a little fresher than that. It's almost a little more melon note behind yeah. all of the earthy salt. And it's so, it's such a slow motion, gentle move. Yeah. Of flavors. Right? It doesn't explode, but it's not simple or one noted. Yeah. It is, it's like watching, it's like watching smoke unfurl. Yeah. From a from a cigar that you're not smoking, you haven't blown out and it didn't go into a puff. Yeah. It's rolling off the end of the cigar. Mm -hmm. And it's just sort of curling in the wind eddies. Yeah. I think 46%, an interesting proof, because it's enough for the flavors to be there, but they never get to a point where you are going, you don't have to kind of clinch down and brace yourself. Yeah. It's like go oh, this kind of little flourishes here and there. I really like it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So they've got a few releases and this is their peated version. Flourishes, First edition. Flourishes of the notes that we were finding on the nose. On the taste, you're not getting, you know, wildly different things than what you're expecting yeah. whenever you're smelling it. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this, but we're gonna move on to a gift. Now, there's context for this. And a bit of a dry finish. Dry finish. Look at this bottle. Not fruity, not fluid, dry finish. We're oh. gonna move on to another gift. Wow. Italian malt whiskey. Italian malt whiskey. Okay. Now, guess who this is a gift from? 
uh, Whiskey Pixie. Vito. V yeah. Right? Now, if we met Vito for the first time ever at the grand opening, he, um, when he sort of crashed the Engelbrecht hangout. Right. So, uh, he, he's, he's shorter than Daniel. Yeah. And he asked me to uh, give him a nickname. I said, fine, you're the Whiskey Pixie. And it stuck. And he said, I regret so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I'd never asked. <laughs> nah, we dug him. He's full of enthusiasm yeah. and pizzazz, and he's part of the Cast Rank channel now. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's him and Brad LeClaire and, and uh, Gallaudet. the Gaburba way. Yeah. So, read this. Hey guys, I offer this as tribute in hopes that we can get some love for the Italian whiskey scene. There's a scene, apparently. Evidently. There's a scene. Below is some info and my own novice tasting notes. Love meeting you guys with Engelbrecht before the opening. Huge thanks to everyone in the community. We got your backs. Enjoy my poonie, <laughs> he said. In all caps, enjoy my poonie. <laughs> the, this is batch number three. Wait, wait. Love the Whiskey Pixie. Also, along with the Dark Mooch, down with Ardbeg, Mailer, Freud, Grand Supreme. Hashtag Zerp Rage Incoming. That's your bully. Gosh, so many inside jokes there. Yeah, really. It's nonstop <laughs> inside jokes. Okay, so this is an Italian uh, grain mix of malt, uh, rye, okay, and uh, wheat. So in that order, dominantly malt. I, I know. I think it's actually rye, wheat, malt. It's not. It's not a. Uh, it says malt whiskey, but it's got all three grains in there. Okay. And from my reading, it looks like there's a lot more rye than you would ever think in there. It starts in Marsala wine casks, and it ends in ex Isla barrels. So now, they, I, think, I think I'm finding that wine, that wine cask. I'm not finding the rye. I'm finding the malty uh, uh, note, and I'm finding the, the wine cask note. Yeah, me too. It's Marsala. malt and wine. Yeah. And a little bit of that, that phenolic smoke note. I'm not getting a smoke. I'm getting. I am, but I'm getting it like one of the Lafroigs that's younger, no age statement, and dominantly a wine cask. Finish. Like a like a honey slash floral note. I like this nose. I really I really like that nose. And then was the proof relatively low? Yeah, forty three percent. There's a candied, sort of hard candied note behind the smoke. Yeah, it's a it, so the word I would describe if a single word it was going to describe the nose on this it would be fresh. Yeah, fresh. 43%. Oh, hey, oh, whoa, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. What the f was that? That's interesting. What's that? So about? that turned into asparagus. Mushrooms. You say asparagus, I yeah, say mushrooms. Yeah, this got like stringy green vegetal. Yes. <laughs> like, no, like actual barbecue grill slight charred vegetables. <laughs> what the f but The fact that we both said, wait a minute. Whoa! Vegetables. <laughs> We're eating vegetables now. <laughs> but, but the nose does not show that. Very different than the, than the nose here. The but, nose is sweet. But I'm very eager to go back for more. What? That was so interesting and unique. I, I have never tasted anything like right. that in a whiskey glass. No, uh, and it is garden <laughs> umami. It's the umami yeah. vegetation. God, God, that's so good. Yeah, that's yeah. You're okay. That's a really good nose. It's the garden umami. And umami is basically the, the savory. Yeah. yeah. And as for, I, I definitely eat mushroom. And now I'm starting to find smoke on the taste. Or mm -hmm. yeah, on the nose. On the nose. I'm finding smoke on the nose after I've tasted. Oh! No, it's totally asparagus! This tastes exactly like asparagus. So I had an asparagus garden in high school, and there was a point at which the stalk of asparagus would get too big, and it doesn't, that's not the one you want to harvest because right. it's too big, but you'd crack them off at the base. Right. And then you would, everyone would take a bite to see if it was still sweet or whether it was gone, it had gone bitter right. asparagus vegetable. Sure. This is the like, you take a bite and you're like, no, this isn't gonna, we're not gonna save this. Right. This is the raw, uncooked, ungrilled, Asparagus. How did you get asparagus into a bottle? So whenever you're distilling, you have all of these kind of guidelines, rules of thumb. You want this kind of char to eventually get a whiskey to turn into that. You want this kind of proof to pull out the sweeter notes in the barrel. Or you want this kind of proof to pull out the more, you know, tanniny notes in the barrel. I don't know where on all of these guidelines and wheels and pie charts and where you get the asparagus. No, asparagus. it is absolutely, I keep going back thinking I'm missing something. It is mother asparagus. <laughs> we are drinking liquid <laughs> asparagus. So, I'm so glad this is Vito. Oh. Vito could take a ball bust. Dude. That is a, so, and, and I have never Daniel, had anything like that in my life. Daniel, and what's 
super interesting is, and there's a few whiskeys that end up this way, how different the nose is. Mm -hmm. This is a different. The nose was a classic malt. Like, go back to the nose. It's a classic malt. It's not. I'm thinking Legic. I'm thinking Talisker. I'm thinking even Oban. Right. And then on the taste. It's f***ing asparagus. <laughs> okay, I'm going back to the Japanese whiskey. Right. Because uh, you're freaking me out, man. You're freaking me out. <laughs> you're freaking me out, man. <laughs> David Patton, not trying to criticize, but don't really get the whole whiskey and food pairing. Okay, so Have I wanted to try to whiskey him. with asparagus. Yeah, yeah. No, so his viewpoint is essentially that anything high proof is going to overpower food. So what's the point of food pairing? Mm. Right? Mm. Now, Not, mm. I would challenge you. So in our Whiskey Sommelier courses, we have an astounding chef, Anthony Dina, who builds structured food palate tastings around whiskey. And then in level two, we force you to go downstairs to this huge layout of Italian foods and meats and cheeses and pull a whiskey from the vault, pair it with things from the food table and explain what you're trying to accomplish. What you will find is that we can take the same whiskey, pair it with seven different foods, the whiskey changes every time and the food changes every time and neither one is necessarily in charge. It depends on the pairing. Whiskey will absolutely alter everything you taste. Now, if I had one challenge, it would be, and I don't know that you like smoky whiskey, it would be to go to a steakhouse and where they also have seafood, and you can do surf and turf, you can do like oysters and shrimp, and you can also do steak, and order a Talisker. Get Talisker 10, and drink a Talisker 10 which eat with each course at a steakhouse, right. and watch how the Talisker changes instead of the food changing. Fine. And that will show that will open up your eyes into whiskey pairing. So one more one once more into the breach. Into the asparagus. So I want you to this is the asparagus whiskey. Go back and the first one fifth of the taste. The 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 asparagus, it's the bulk of the flavor and the finish is just wow. You get the asparagus and then like yeah. the button mushrooms you get on salad, the white mushrooms sliced up, I get a little bit of that too. But the first one fifth of the flavor. I'm gonna buy it. Do it. Get it. What, what is it? It's right here. It's it's the asparagus whiskey. Is, yeah, is that yours right there? Yes. But what's the one fifth? What am it's I looking for? It's very similar to the nose. It's very similar to the nose. Okay. Yes. So, and then it turns into asparagus. It happens too fast. It, it happens too fast. It's like much. trying to read small print on right. a Formula One car so you get, you drink as it. it flies by you, you drink in the it stands. Like, oh, it's kind of similar to the nose. You get like the multis. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's, that's some good. <laughs> uh, long time lurker. This is Fred Nyberg, um, lover of the tribe, looking for guidance. I've never had a cigar before, but I've been wanting to try one. Recommendations is what I'm after. Something that isn't too expensive, but wouldn't leave me disappointed. Maybe something that goes well with Petey whiskeys and is readily available. So, one, if you're not already into cigars, there's no reason to dive into it, right? There's like some health issues, but if you're curious and you're a grown ass adult, you can make your own decisions. The thing that really took me a long time to, you know, get comfortable with, and I'm still mm -hmm. not entirely there, is the fact that whenever I have a cigar, the next morning, it's like a dog in my mouth. Yeah, you'll get used to it. Well, I don't. <laughs> I'm still not. <laughs> but in, you know, as I'm as I'm cigaring, it's like, wow, this is overwhelming and smoky and dominant flavors, and it's absolutely changing the experience that I'm having mm -hmm. with my whiskey. I we did a cigar whiskey pairing episode recently on the Tribe Channel here. Yep. Um, but for cigar recommendations, uh, Cigars Daily, I think, is a good channel to check. Yeah, out. just watch somebody else. But so one of the commenters on there, his name was. Uh, Albi Blanco. Albi Blanco said Hemingway short story all day. That would have been yeah. my first recommendation. Yeah. Because Hemingway that's, that's is the name of his cigar. Yeah, Hemingway is an Arturo Fuente series mm -hmm. called Hemingway Cigars, and they've got all different sizes. Mm -hmm. And the short story is the smallest, and it's a little torpedo with a little button end. Right. And it is maybe five to seven dollars a stick. It's the cheapest of the Hemingway releases, and it's magical, and it's. A fifth, 20 to 30 minute smoke. Daniel. Try that. You're, you're getting used to the asparagus. I've acclimated to the asparagus. Nope, I'm not doing it. I've acclimated. It's not asparagus anymore. This is now very much in line with the nose. Okay. This this whiskey is freaking me out, dude. I'm back to the Japanese whiskey. This, I, I need to. 
<laughs> and curl in the fetal position, <laughs> rethink my positions on everything. <laughs> oh Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal the lover's heart. And if you drink, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.